Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy and today our expert trainer will be discussing about DevOps IAC tools fundamentals understanding from the basics. So let's get into the video. Okay, so we have these many tools with us. Okay, on the overall, these all the tools together, we call it as IAC tools which is infrastructure as a code tools okay all these tools together we call it as infrastructure as a code in this the first two four will fall under your configuration management <coughs> okay the second four or five is dependent on or it will fall under provisioning management okay so whatever uh, gentlemen i think amit mentioned everything is correct so what is a configuration management what is a pro provisional sorry what's a provisioning management a provision is nothing but i am trying to create an empty virtual machine okay so this is my provision I'm trying to create an empty virtual machine with the help of a CPU, RAM, storage, XYZ, network, whatever I want, I can just try to create it. So these tools are very much capable of doing it. And inside my virtual machine, I am trying to create two users. Okay. And I am trying to copy 10 files. And then I am installing five softwares. I am changing a group policy. So these things will be done by configuration management people okay so any company it actually needs a combination of configuration management and provisioning management but these people the first four people are capable of provisioning management also okay with the help of ansible i can create an infrastructure okay i can do the configurations inside an infrastructure also with the help of terraform i can create an infrastructure i can use some scripts to run the provisioning sorry to run the configuration inside my virtual machine also okay these people are capable of doing configuration management also by integrating it with some shell scripts or PowerShell scripts and other things, and I can still try to do it. Okay, basically these eight people can do both provisioning and configuration management. That's why these people are called as infrastructure as a core tools. But the first two four is very, very, very famous for configuration management. They will do it like a piece of cake. These they are just doing it as an extra work capable okay but in this configuration management they are the best but they are capable of doing provisioning management same the bottom people are best in provision but they are capable of doing configuration management for all the small scale companies like less than 50 people 30 people 40 people they cannot have two people to run two different tasks that's why they will use only one tool, either it's an Ansible or either it's a Terraform, and they will do this both provisioning and configuration together. But a medium scale and an enterprise level companies, they will always have two different tools altogether. One for provisioning alone, one for configuration alone, in which this Ansible and Terraform are like brothers. They will always go hand in hand together. And it's very, very famous outside in the market and both are free okay so now let's forget the bottom ones and let's focus on these four things in these again these two are different and these two are different okay the first two fall under pull based mechanism the second fall under push based mechanism what is the difference between push and pull I have a server, okay, and this server is connected to multiple clients around the world. Okay. When I use Jeff for Puppet, okay, 
I am trying to tell to the server, boss, there is a SQL patch available. Try to install it to all the servers. Okay, I'm giving this patch to the server. So what Jeff and Puppet will do is like, it will not do anything. The client has to automatically connect to the server every interval of time. Let it be one hour or five hours or 10 hours. The interval of time differs. The client has to ask the server, boss, do I need to do anything? Do I need to have anything? So when client goes and asks server, server will tell, yes, I have one patch with me. Go ahead and update it. Then the client will take that patch and then it will update. Okay. This is my pull based mechanism. Ansible and salt are push based, exact opposite. When I try to send something to the server, server will immediately push it to all the respective clients. Okay. That is a push based mechanism. So sometimes again, people will not prefer this push. People will prefer only pull. Why is that? Again, imagining, imagine the production servers. Right? When I do a push automatically, what happens? It goes and impacts the production servers and automatically starts or it, it just makes something chaos. Or what happens if everything gets pushes at the same time and my network gets stuck at the same time? Yes. Correct. So these are all some of the reasons why push is not preferred in some cases. Okay. But even though a lot of these disadvantages and everything is there, out of these four, this Ansible is very, very, very famous nowadays. Okay. Why is that? For the chef and puppet when i have one server with thousand clients i have to install chef master and chef client on all the thousand that is a very big pain and same with puppet i have to install puppet master and puppet client on all the thousand missions which is like every time when i create a new mission i have to install puppet client and then connect it so it's a very big headache to handle okay but Ansible and salt, what happens is like it works on age and plus. That's a one main reason why Ansible is very famous across in the world nowadays. So guys, this was our expert from Team K21 Academy. And if in case you missed up on anything or if you want to have a deeper dive in DevOps, then we have something really special for you. We have our free class on DevOps for beginners, what, why, and how to get higher paid jobs. All you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash DevOps02. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of interface. Just click on book your free seat now. Select your event date, add your name, your email address, your phone number, and click yes, save my seat. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of URL. Save that URL, add it to your calendars, and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, keep learning.